No, I was actually looking up the plot description for this film because um, you judge by what the movie presents, there are like three plots. And then you read what's here and it's like, I don't know if we got that film. I mean, the advertisement for this film, it's impressive. It is impressive because you know what? It says the epic conclusion of the Jurassic era. And my first thought was, epic? Maybe not. Interesting? Sure. Conclusion? You'll find out. Hello, everyone, and welcome to For the Agenda. My name is Huang, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Jurassic World Dominion, the newest film in the Jurassic Park series, and of course, the final one of the Jurassic World trilogy. So I'm going to read the plot real quick. Four years after Isla Nublar was destroyed, dinosaurs now live and hunt alongside humans all over the world. This fragile balance will reshape the future and determine once and for all whether human beings are to remain the apex predators on a planet they now share with history's most fearsome creatures. So here's the thing. I think a lot of us who are fans of this film had high expectations because we were getting three beloved characters back. And for me, that definitely took a toll on my experience. But Jurassic World Dominion for me it's a mixed bag because on the one hand, I had fun. It was a mess, but I had fun. And on the other hand, you know, the critical side, there's a lot you can criticize in this film, quite honestly. So of course there are things I liked and didn't like about this movie. Again, it's a mixed bag for me. So let's just dive into this review. I'm gonna start with what I liked. Um, I enjoyed the action scenes. I thought they were entertaining, nowhere near as good as the first Jurassic film in either trilogy. The humor in here, it worked for me. Um, some people might find it cheesy or even eye rolling, but it worked for me. And to be honest, it's kind of like, it felt like dad jokes. And sometimes I chuckled. I'm not gonna lie, I chuckled. I like dad jokes every now and then. So the humor worked for me. It's not the best written jokes, but you know what? Passable, they're passable. I enjoyed it. I was looking to have a good time. For me, the best comedic timing here, hands down, was Jeff Goldblum and followed by Dewanda Weiss's Kayla Watts. I really liked her character a little more on her later. She was great. Their jokes landed the most out of everyone's. Now, seeing the trio of Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum, it made my nostalgic heart really happy. Quite honestly, they're probably the reason why I gave this film a higher rating when I first saw it. It was great to see them again back in action and seeing them on this adventure was probably the highlight of this film. If you're coming to see the original cast and you're only there to see the original cast, you might enjoy this film more than others will. For me, that for me was worth the price of admission. Now, in terms of the cast itself, since we're on the topic of cast, I thought Dewanda Wise, she was fantastic. She is a scene stealer here. She's so funny. She, her character was smart. She was cool. And, you know, I know she was a supporting role in this film, but quite honestly, she could have easily been one of the leads if you rewrote a couple of things and it would have been much better because while her arc works here, I would have rather followed her on this adventure in this film. I really liked her character. I definitely liked Bryce Dallas Howard's character more in this film. She's not the most likable character ever if you watch the three films, but I did sympathize with her and rooted for her more in this film. And as for her counterpart, Chris Pratt, I actually ended up liking his character much less in this film. Quite honestly, I liked this character less and less as the films went on. I wasn't rooting for him, not gonna lie. It, here's the thing though with Chris Pratt, with me and Chris Pratt, um, you know, I respect you securing it back, absolutely. I think though, as an actor, he is starting to get what some people call the Ryan Reynolds treatment. He gets the same role over and over in terms of Star-Lord, now Owen Grady. Now he's gonna be in the new Mario film. He's gonna be in the upcoming Garfield film. And you know, the Lego movie, he was in the Lego movie, and after a while, it kind of feels like a similar role, bringing similar comedy. 
just didn't work for me. I just feel at this point, he's starting to get overexposed. And, you know, he's here. He's there. He's everywhere. Also, Dijun Lachman as Soyona Santos felt like such a cool character. And her arc, it's honestly a shame it got wasted. You know, her character arc in this film, it's one of the three plots, which I'm going to get to. But essentially, there's like an underground dinosaur black market kind of thing. And quite honestly, she could have been the big villain of this whole film and it would have worked. And, you know, the way she tried to take out characters, it was cool. It felt not only very underwritten, but it also felt like a throwaway character that could have been really cool if properly utilized. So now comes for what am I critiquing about this film? Okay, story-wise, it's a lot. It feels like two or three adventures rolled into one. And I had fun with the world building at times, but, you know, it felt like, wait, weren't we supposed to be focused on this? Why did we suddenly shift here? Where are we going? What's going on? How is this going to tie into each other? There's like three storylines at once, and the main focus wasn't even on the dinosaurs. You know, which is essentially one of the reasons why a Jurassic Park film works. It's what they focus on. Like, sure, you may want to know about the science. That's cool and all. But when you think about the first film and you remember the impactful, memorable scenes, you think about the dinosaurs, you think about the suspense, the tension. You were scared for these characters and you wanted to see if they'd actually make it to the next part of the movie. Here, there's not much suspense. It just felt like a sloppy way to get through the film. And you really didn't feel that much danger for some of the characters. Like on one or two occasions, yeah, you actually were like, wait, are they gonna, is this person gonna make it? I'm not sure. But you can't deny that this film, story-wise, is sloppy. It's entertaining, but sloppy as hell. It's two and a half hours and it's, it's a messy way to end this trilogy. You're trying to tie up too many things at once and too many ideas were thrown. It's like, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. Wait, we gotta settle this, wait, we gotta settle that. It's too many cooks in the kitchen at this point and it would have been better if they were able to just create one strong storyline. Now, the dinosaurs here, they're fine. You know, there's nothing out of the ordinary, just fine. But I definitely got the vibe with this film that the message they were trying to send was, you know, the first film, they had one huge attraction, you know, the T-Rex. And that was the main alpha. Here, you have multiple attractions trying to be the alpha because the scientists, they got greedy and they lost control. So now we don't know who's the real dominant species on this planet. Is it the humans? Is it the dinosaurs? And if it's the dinosaurs, which one? Because now there's like, there's a couple trying to take the main spot. And, you know, a couple scenes, you know, they had the tension with the dinosaurs when they appear. And I like that. I, when it works, it works. But nowhere again did they get on the level of the original Jurassic Park not even close like not even at least to the first Jurassic World was there a scene where I was as scared for one of these characters which is unfortunate because then it's not as exciting as it could be so come to think of it it was set up as a film that was supposed to have big time risks and consequences you know the stakes were supposed to be at their highest and here well I didn't feel that. And that's the thing with the script. It feels like the stakes aren't high enough. And, you know, it just doesn't take enough risks. While I was paying mostly attention to the legacy characters and what was happening to them, there are also so many characters at this point because there are so many storylines. They're like, who am I supposed to keep up with? I know who I'm rooting for and I know who I'm not rooting for, but there's also a lot to keep up with here. It was a letdown. Again, this is labeled as an epic conclusion and I didn't really get epic because I didn't really see them take enough risks with some of these characters. I think some of the, again, the action scenes that they used were cool, but did I feel scared for a lot of these characters? Not really. Do, was I entertained? Yes. And that's, I think, the problem here. They focus more on entertainment rather than trying to make a really good Jurassic World film. You know, when you label this epic conclusion of a trilogy, you need to deliver that. And here, 
part that made it epic was the legacy characters being in this film, not the film overall. And I think that's unfortunate because this could have worked out so much better had the script been stronger. Now, speaking of that ending, again, epic conclusion of the trilogy. And you have an ending here that for me felt inconclusive, like, oh, that's it. The, the door feels like it's still a bit open because if they decide to make another film, which let's be honest here, if this film makes a billion dollars at the box office, which quite honestly, it might. I never ruled that out as a possibility with these films. But if that were to happen, my suggestion is they learn from what happened in this one, what didn't work, bring back the legacy characters, absolutely, and make them the main stars and focus on a proper ending because it just didn't feel like it was done. It just feels like there was still more that they could have explored. If, of course, this film makes a billion dollars, if they actually want to do that fourth film. I'm spitballing here because I, quite honestly, as an ending, if I'm already thinking, oh, this doesn't feel like it's done, there could still be one more film. You didn't give me an epic conclusion. You gave me part one of a conclusion that clearly was not epic enough. And that is a problem. Overall, you know, I had fun with this film. Overall, I had fun with it. It was definitely better than Fallen Kingdom, but not as amazing as it could have been. You know, it felt like the way they were advertising this, this could have been the biggest film in the whole trilogy. And it feels like the trilogy ended up going out with a whimper instead of a bang because it didn't really reach its full potential. And it makes the first Jurassic World the best film in that entire trilogy, which at least is on par with Jurassic Park being the best of the original trilogy. It's unfortunate what happened with this film. Um, I didn't hate it. I liked it. I would probably rewatch it, sure. Because quite honestly, getting to spend time with Dr. Alan Grant, Dr. Ellie Sattler, and Dr. Ian Malcolm, for me, was worth the price of admission for the sake of nostalgia. And, you know, you could chalk this film up to nostalgic summer cash grab that ended up working for me, but may not work for everyone else. You know, it's overall a good summer blockbuster for the casual moviegoer. You know, just the ones that are like, hey, I want to see something fun in the theaters. It's Friday night. I have a group of friends. Let's watch Jurassic World. This looks exciting. Definitely that kind of film is where this fits. Once it's filmed to pass the time and you enjoy yourselves, will this end up on your top 10 of the year list? Perhaps it won't, but you enjoyed yourself in that moment. And in that sense, it does work. My rating for this yesterday was a seven out of 10. My rating for this today is a six and a half. And again, that is purely just because I got to see the original trio from Jurassic Park return. That is purely a little bit biased, but I really enjoyed the nostalgic moments. It really got to me. So it worked. I have to rewatch this film, see where I'll officially stand on it. My honest recommendation. You're either going to like this or you won't. So see this in a theater. Theater is still the same, the best way to see this. But lower the expectations and just go in to be entertained if you're going to criticize it the whole time you're not going to enjoy it if you're going to have fun with it you might have a better time I'm not saying the best time but you might have a better time just go there to have a good time you pay for a premium format theater maybe to just enrich the experience a bit maybe appreciate more of the action on a bigger screen i saw this in a regular theater and I'm not going to lie, maybe if the screen was a bit bigger, I would have enjoyed it a bit more, like an IMAX or Adobe Atmos. You know, it maybe would have helped a little bit more distract me from the critical parts because Supreme Format Theaters do. They make it more exciting. So that is my review of Jurassic World Dominion. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can hit the like button and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter and on Letterboxd at Lady Mohicans. And remember, regardless of what others feel about the things you love, you just got to remember, it's always for the agenda. Bye.